All right, so the Lakers, uh, it's so ironic. They play great against Golden State. Then they go out against Dallas last night, and they stink. Uh, what do you make of them? I think people are getting ahead of themselves when they say they're going to make the playoffs. Oh, come on now. They're yeah, not in a they're playoff They're not team. making the playoffs. Be happy as you develop a system, change the culture, bring winning into it, and then see which young players can be stars. Can D'Angelo Russell be a star? Can Julius Randle be a star, or Clarkson, or Ingram? That's what this year is about in establishing that culture, and I think Luke's doing it. So I love where they're headed. Tony Romo, <clears throat> they have cleared him to practice and may activate Tony Romo against the Steelers. I know you love Dak Prescott, and he has been very impressive, but you do realize Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston, Blake Bortles have more touchdown passes. Tony Romo would be unbeaten with this team. It just feels like this Cowboys team has kind of turned the page. And Romo, he, to a man, he's never going to say anything that's wrong. But you got to think in his heart of hearts, he's wondering, if I'm in here, do we beat the Giants week one, 35 to 10, and just roll? You can't live in hypotheticals. And right now, in the present, they're seven and one, and this is good for football, and Dak Prescott's good for America's team. So you're a general manager for a Jacksonville and San Diego. Where do you go in the college ranks? If you're a team and you're Jacksonville and you need to build a program, go hire a good young college coach. He'll learn the pro game, but you get a program, you get a philosophy, you get an organization that understands it, and he can coach the entire team. Because what the NFL is missing so badly right now is head coaches. We miss the Bill Parcells, we miss the Joe Gibbs, we miss those kind of coaches, and I think if you want to get one, Chris Peterson would be the first guy you call. There's a guy right there. Now, he has no pro experience. He's built a program at Boise. Yeah. He built a program at Washington. How surprised were you, Conor McGregor on the line, when he called you the least intimidating fighter he's ever fought? He's got to say something to hide himself up, but in reality, all they do is talk about me. All they do is worry about me. His coach has been planning to fight me since way back. So he can say what he wants, but when we came face to face, he stood, when we came face to face originally, he stood on his tippy toes. He started making, he had a weird reaction, started making these funny faces, tilting his head side to side. It was a, it was a rea you know, you can't hide these reactions. In that moment, in that pressure moment when the fans and everyone's there, you cannot fake these moments, you can't hide them. And between me and him, we, we could see what's happening. He, it's, a, it's a guy that doesn't know what's happening. He's, he's panicking in there and he's trying to, He's trying to convince himself this is not what this is, but, but it is what it is. And on Saturday night, he will find that out.